Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Uh, and today I got a video for you on a topic that I thought would be shockingly easy, but is actually slightly difficult and not just difficult, just annoying to actually pull off uh, in actuality. And that is uploading a pandas data frame into S3. Um, so I thought there would just be an upload file in S3 operator. There isn't, um, you know, there's use an API request to put an object, but then it becomes kind of annoying to actually, hey, how do I put a pandas data frame into an API request? Um, so today I'm gonna show you exactly how you can connect, um, or not connect, but transfer a file from a, an S3 bucket uh, into a, or sorry, from a pandas data frame into an S3 bucket. And so that's what we'll show you today. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, so a few things you'll need here that I'm using, um, you'll need a DAG decorator, um, so you can actually define your DAGs. You'll need the Astro SQL as AQL and the Astro table. Um, this allows you to earn a pandas data frame um, from a task. Um, and that's just kind of how we're using to actually pass data between tasks. Then you'll import pendulum, so you have the proper date time. You'll have Bluetooth 3. Um, so this is actually how we're going to be connecting to S3. Bluetooth 3 is basically allows you to hook into AWS and then perform operations from there. Um, and then we're also going to import pandas, of course, and string IO. And so what this is going to do is actually act as a buffer so that when we're uploading our data into our pandas data frame into S3, um, we don't actually need to save it anywhere on our local. Save it to the CSV buffer, and then it'll pull from that CSV when we're uh, uploading it into Snowflake, or sorry, into S3. Um, and so that's all we need to get started. So after that, what we're going to do is just some setup for this specific DAG. So this example, I'm just going pulling a list of stock uh, information um, from a GitHub repo that I created. Um, so you can use it yourself. I'll drop a link in the description if you want to pull the same data. Um, and so after that, and this this part, I wouldn't focus too heavily on. This is just, like, hey, this is how we're pulling data. So once we've read this and its data frame in as a CSV, um, we are going to just clean, in, clean that data. So Again, this is just showing you, hey, I can use the AQL function to run a SQL statement on my pandas data frame, get that information, and then also guess that into another task as a pandas data frame. I actually need to be bringing it back. Then once I've done that, I transform my information, actually get uh, exactly the fields I want. So I just want the opening price, the highest opening price for every month. Um, and so here again, I'm using that AQL data frame to by month. Uh, create a new data frame to store my highest values for this stock. And then for each month, give me my highest price for stickers that I put in that list here. And then I just have this print and then return the highest open values as a pandas data frame. So that means when I pull the output of this task, it'll return and a pandas data frame. Um, and then the final task that we're gonna need to write, and this is the actual important one, a couple steps is our uploading it into S3. Here we're gonna say this task is going to take a pandas data frame um, parameter, um, and then we're going to initialize a IO buffer. So it's almost like a file system, batch file system. Um, so CSV buffer just to hold our intermediary CSV. Um, we are going to just get the ticker name from that CSV here, uh, print it, make sure it's right. So this is doing some quality checks. Um, and then what you'll wanna do um, is, upload your information up Bluetooth 3. Um, so to actually create or use Bluetooth, what you'll do is you're first going to create um, like a variable, basically a good session. What you'll want to have in this session definition um, is just whatever name you want to call it, S3, whatever resource you're actually using. So in this case, I'm a resource. So I'll use S3 if you were back with a Redshift, whatever else, you would use that resource. Um, and then here, I'll also put my access key, your secret access key, and also make sure you put your AWS session token. Um, not using command line access, then you can uh, put in just your access key and ID and policy, but you'll need, or sorry, access key ID and access key, but you'll need to create a policy for that. Plus around a lot of that, I just like doing command line or programmatic access and tokens. Um, so after you've gotten Bluetooth 3 session created, then, we are going to put our file. You can see this is going to this task is going to take our ticker name, uh, choose our S3 bucket, which 
compare stock data is the folder within there. Um, and then we're going to dynamically create this uh, CSV file using that ticker name. So file for each stock. Um, and then we're going to use the dot put method to actually take the body of that ticker name. So if you can up here, we're putting that stock data into that CSV buffer. So we're uploading as pandas data frame or as a CSV to our CSV buffer. Instead of saving it in a local file path, we're saving it to that CSV buffer, which then reference I reference buffer dot get value. So this particular file is in there at that time. So this will clean out in between paths. So I'll show you. We're going to map over this path to have it run. Um, and so after you've done that, uh, your files will start to show up in S3. Um, but well, not just yet. We're actually wanting to find some our DAG file. Um, so for our DAG file, it is going to be pretty simple. Um, we're just going to have our DAG definition here. And then within our actual definition file or section, we are pretty much is going to be consecutively mapping um, over each of those tasks. You can see we're not expanding that first task um, to the tickle list. So this is going to load the stock data for each of those stock tickers, clean it, transform it, and then upload it all into S3. And that's all going to happen um, in parallel. The only thing, so since using the dot expand method, this is automatically going to define the relationships between our tasks. Um, and then what we do is have this line of work is type in tag object equals stock data. And boom, now we have fully functional bag. So let's kick it over to the Airflow UI and I'll show you what this looks like. And here we have it in our grid view. Um, so I'll hit play. So this actually show you uh, live that it is going to work, but I have, ignore this copy from S3 Snowflake. There's another step in this pipeline down the load that we're going to try. Um, but right now, what I want to check is you can see once I transform the stock data, um, this will actually give me my information about that stock. Uh, I have a command just to print it to give me the head, see what the information I'm actually putting in S3 is. Um, and you can see they're all properly putting them into S3. So you can see um, printing the ticker there just because I wanted to print the ticker to make sure it's uh, put in the right stock. One. Um, and if we go into our bucket, we'll see. Here we are. Go into my bucket for my stock data here. They have my Apple, CVX, and Fox all here. All their stock data ready to be used by me as my role in my very high powered hedge fund. I want to go. I can't because it's private. Um, but here, I can open this CSV. Pull up using other search. Um, but it is the exact same information. You can check this out at home yourself. Um, so, quick, easy video for you. Um, pretty functional. Uh, can't wait for someone to create a operator to just transfer from pandas into S3. But I don't think we're. Um, so, have a good one, y'all. Data guy out.